In today's video, guys, we are installing brand new kitchen cabinets for my uppers. So this is gonna be video number four in our kitchen remodel series. We've repurposed the cabinets, we've tiled the countertop, we ran new electrical. If you wanna see any of those videos, they'll be in the video description below. The reason I have my sink installed right now is because I need this to install my cabinets. I've got a line going through the middle of my faucet, the middle of my drain, so I know I'm square to the wall. It's gonna give me a middle line on the wall. Okay. If you're installing kitchen cabinet uppers, it generally is you're adding to something that doesn't exist or you're installing a new kitchen, the uppers go first. Okay. Every kitchen design, will you'll put the uppers in and then you'll do the base cabinets because it's too hard to stand off the wall like this all day long. It'll kill your back, right? So you put in the uppers first. What I've got to do in this situation is I've got to work off a center line and then build left and right. I don't, want to, I don't want to guess where my, my line starts. This is a lot easier to do. Um, so now I can take this cabinet. For instance, I already have a center line on it. <laughs> that just made my life so much easier, right? Okay, so there's my center, there's my center. Now what I have to do is just a couple of measurements. I want to actually take out a marker, mark the height, measure down on the actual cabinet depth, I'm gonna install a piece of wood here that I can set this on while I screw it in place. It's really that simple. Gotta love a laser level. Well, first of all, this cabinet is actually 18. So it's an 18 by 30, okay? We also have 24 by 30s, okay? And when you buy a cabinet and it says 18 by 30, they mean 30. It's not like tile, the numbers are true. So, exactly 30. My other cabinets are 24 by 30s. So what I want to do here is just find my 18 inch line. And this is funny because I actually drew that on before the counters went in. And my 18 inch line is pretty consistent right there. Okay. And then I want to double check my 30 and it is a quarter inch higher than that. Okay. And then I'm going to mark down 18. That's where my cabinet is going to go. That's my base. Okay. Boom. And I don't mean kind of level. When you're doing cabinetry, you want on the bloody money level. Okay. There we go. There's my spots. There's two different processes for putting cabinets in. One of them is identifying the studs, screwing the cabinet to the stud. And the other one is hanging the next cabinet off of the existing cabinets and then adding screws to it later. In this situation, we're going to screw right into the stud right out of the gate. And I'm going to put this mark above my wood. And if you don't know how to use a stud finder, well, it's not always perfect either, so be careful. Wow, what happened here? There it is again. Okay, let's try to see if we get lucky. There it is, okay. That is a stud. Nice. There should be one right around here. Yep. And just slide it and it'll scream. And then we're going to aim for the middle of those spots, okay? Because it is not a perfect science, but for 18 bucks, right? That's a hell of a deal. This is my line for the top. So I'm going to look up there and find that spot exactly and drive those in. Now, I'm using a three inch screw. Oop. Ah, come on, baby. Which means I've got inch and a half material plus half inch drywall, this is two inches, plus an electrical code requires there be a plate unless the wire is more than an inch and a half away from the surface. So I have three and a half inches of clearance here, so I'm not worried about the screw. Not, I, I'm screwing blind, but if this situation, I'm pretty confident we're not gonna run into a screwing through electrical. It's never a perfect world. If you're nervous about that, you can always cut away the drywall look and then put the drywall back. Okay, and then you can be more confident. All right, now, we don't need to have doors installed to hang a cabinet. It does add a fair amount of extra weight to the box, just so you understand the workings of a box. This is a solid surface box, which means the entire back here is um, going to be at least 3 eighths, probably half inch solid backing. In a lot of cases, what you'll find it's like gonna be like an eighth inch hardboard and you're gonna see a one by three and a one by three on the back, okay? Either way, you're always gonna be putting a screw within the first two inches on the top or the two inches on the bottom, all right? 
So it doesn't matter which kind of cabinet you get. They all follow the same principle. Okay. I'm liking that. So then I'm going to pre-drill into the back with the screws. You're ready to hang this thing. It's a fair amount of commitment going on there, isn't it? Okay. We'll do the same with the other one. Now, I'm not drilling all the way through the cabinet. I'm just setting the screws in place. Here comes the magic. We're going to lift this up. We're going to set that in the middle here. We're going to make sure my line is right up the middle again, connecting these two dots. We'll slide that into position. And then you can visually check to see if your screws are in the right spot. And they are. I would suggest put the top screw in first because that's what's going to keep it from falling off. If you're not sure what the sound of driving a screw into wood is, that's it. <laughs> Lots of resistance. In the finishing stage, I'm going to show you, they sell these little white caps at the Home Depot in the little trays, little plastic trays in the screw aisle. And they're actually designed to get just stick over the screws and they're white. So then you can't see your screws after the fact. So you want to install them nice and flush. There we go. And then the bottoms. And the reason we're putting in, the reason we're putting in four screws is they carry 80 pounds of shear strength each. That's 360 pounds, this one cabinet. Um, that's a lot. And if you want to make sure you don't slip off your screw, like I did over there like an idiot. Push on the drill with both hands when you're pulling the trigger. All right. Now. Now don't get worked up over these doors. They're all adjustable, okay? We're working on the box, not the doors. We'll get to that in a minute, but perfect. <laughs> okay, next cabinet. Here we go. 24 by 30, uh, a couple of considerations. One, they, you're gonna wanna take the door off for this one. It is a really heavy cabinet and there's shelves that come in with this. All right, so we're gonna just undo this screw just a little bit right here so that we can take the door off, okay? Every bit of hardware is different in this world, eh? There we go. This comes with little pins for the shelves. Don't just throw things in the garbage, always inspect. And then it comes with these, these things. They're little shelf slider brackets. This is just for shipping to keep everything from sliding around. These are garbage, okay? Take our shelves and set those aside. So we also have stickers. We wanna get rid of this right away, okay? All right, now. We have a hinge over here. When you're doing a kitchen or your layout or your ordering cabinets, just a thought, always consider the function of the cabinet because kitchens have places, they have like regions. You have the sink. And if you're gonna be working at the sink and washing something and putting the dishes away, you want the door to open. When you're standing here, you don't wanna open the door open into you, okay? So consider how this functions, what's gonna be going in that cabinet, how the cabinet functions in the space, if this is a bigger counter, and this is a prep counter, and this is the only upper, you might flip this the other way so that you can open it up and have all of your contents, right? Just keep that in mind. In particular cabinets I bought, I got them, these are in the Home Depot. They're pre-built, they're pre-everything. Yeah, you don't have to build them, but you, you do need to consider how they're gonna function and make sure you install them in the right direction. They're completely reversible, and so are the doors, okay? So they don't have like a right side up, which makes it really handy. Um, if you get into doing custom kitchen cabinets, in a lot of cases, they'll be labeled left or right hand. So be real careful to make sure if you're installing cabinets that you've ordered, match up those codes perfectly. Look at the diagram, refer to the diagram, how the door is supposed to swing open, all of that information when you're installing so you don't run into trouble down the road. This is my secret weapon. I'm installing the cabinet this way, and I need a piece of plywood. 
and I went right in the middle. I'm going to throw a flooring screw, which has got very thick thread, through that plywood and right through the middle of the gable. Okay? It's in the middle of the cabinet, in the middle of my plywood, straight down, and I hold it still. And not loose. This one you want nice and tight. Okay? Boom. And here's why. Now you can take this cabinet and you can stick it up in the air against the wall, slide it over, and then let it sit on there while you're working it. And so you only need one hand now. This is a great way to work. Now, I'm going to set this aside for a second because I still want to try to identify where my studs are, measure off, and put at least one screw in that box in advance, okay? So before we get going, I'm going to take this door off. I'm going to use a couple of hand clamps to put this all together. There's more than one way to skin a cat, right? Nope. Not that I think any of you have need to skin cats anymore. Great. Come on, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry if that offends you. That's a really old expression. I don't even know where it came from. I just know that I've heard that from older people in my life for years. Let's talk about the screws for screwing the cabinets together. Because in this situation, we're going to use the top to help carry the weight. We're going to use clamps to line up the edges. And these work great because they keep them compressed while you're driving screws. And then we've got a few different screws here to look at. This one is inch and a quarter, and it has that beveled head. So if I drive that into two pieces of 5 eighths, I'm exactly the same depth as the cabinet. 5 eighths plus 5 eighths is 10 eighths. That's 1 and 2 eighths, 1 and a quarter. Same as the screw. If I drive that just a little bit too much, it pokes through the other side. So that's dangerous. This one is very similar, only as one and an eighth. So as long as I stay flush, I'll just come right to about there. And that works just fine, okay? The other option, you go with one inch. Now, if you do that, you only got three eighths, or you can drive it a little deeper, okay? So that's what you get as an option. There's still the square head. They'll still make the little plastic caps for that. That's fine. Here's the best option. One and an eighth with this positive stop. This particular screw can't go past the surface because of the way that that head is made. Okay, it's a real beefy head on it and it's not going any further. So when you're done screwing that one in, you have to be really careful because you can actually continue that screw to circle around and it'll tear out all of the guts in the wall and you actually lose its bond. So this one you have to be really sensitive that you drive it just snug and then walk away. All right, there we go. Up and over and down. Okay. And then this one as well. Okay, now that that's clamped, it's not going anywhere. My concern is making sure that these surfaces are both flush with each other. So I'm really loving what I got going on here, and I'm ready to throw a screw into it right now. Now, good to remember, these pins go in the holes to hold the shelf. The shelf sits on top of this, so the perfect placement for a screw is just underneath the hole. And try to go in between, just behind the hole, above it, above your eye level, so you can't ever see the screw. So if it's below your eye level, you go underneath the shelf, and if it's above your eye level, you go over the shelf. All right, and you won't see the screws. Now, I'm gonna screw this one right here, a couple inches back. Done, that's it, right? Just till flush. There we go. I'll do a different kind of screw here. I'm just gonna go with the one inch, okay? Again, um, you're gonna get a little white cap for this, all right? And you wanna wanna be somewhat in the close to the front, okay? That one you want nice and flush. And you saw how that tried to open up as I was screwing in. That happens. We're gonna take this, get our laser level out again. We are gonna find our other stud. So if that's my stud, I wanna put that on the middle of the line. Okay, and now I know 
where my screw set is going to go. I'm going to have this one just above the shelf here so that you can't see it with that top shelf in play. Before we go any further, you want to make sure this box is square. Remember, it's sitting on a piece of plywood and it's screwed to that cabinet, but look what happens. Okay? Why isn't that square, Jeff? Everything else is flush and square. That's square. These cabinets don't have a lot of individual strength. All right? This one is exactly 18 off the counter. This one is 17 and three quarters. Okay? This is a quarter inch low. Now watch what happens here. A little bit of upward pressure, because I can actually make this mark. That's where my cabinet is right now. I can just give it a bit of a oomph. See how that twists? Okay, so that's what I want to do. I want to lift and push and then screw it in. Okay, before I drive it all the way home, double check. Hmm, not quite enough. It's good to know. All right. Jeepers. There we go. Uh, whoo! There we are. Ha! Ah, that was work. Now, um, if you're going to do this for a living, they actually make little miniature sticks here that are jacks. And you can just kind of like clamp and you can squeeze a couple times and it lifts it right up. It's really handy. Me, I like pain. Now, I need to throw in a couple more screws, right? Set the tape lock. Look at that. Right there at an inch and a half. Throw that on the back corner. Going upside down. Inch and a half. You see the lines right through the middle of my drill? That's how you know you're nice and square. Okay. Good, good, good. The only thing left to check now is what's 16 on center? Right? I've got another stud here. You've got an option because now you've got 100 and 160 pounds of torque. You're connected to this. You're transferring load. In, you know, in most people's mind, that's plenty. But remember, big cabinets like this, a lot of cases hold dishes. And if you've got stoneware and you put in 10 dinner plates and a bunch of bowls, you'd be surprised how much that stuff actually works, weighs. Don't push your fasteners to their limit. Okay? Let's find that other stud. We already know it's right next to this electrical because we just finished wiring this thing. So we're going to throw that in there and drop in a couple more screws. All right. I'm putting it just above the last shelf so it disappears. Okay. And then same thing. Pull it out. Lock the tape. Measure the line. It's going to be five and almost a half. Now we're installed. Now we take off the clamps. Okay. Now we can put the doors on. And I'm just going to jump ahead and do the next cabinet. Then I'm going to come back and show you guys how to level all the doors off. Okay. Because that's key. I want to deal with these little patch issues. The way you would address a patch all depends on what you're going to be finishing on. If it's just an open wall, you can do um, one of these patches. This is the old California patch, right? You put mud on all four sides. And then take a piece of drywall out and you cut it so that it's bigger than the hole. Okay? Basically, we're eyeballing the size of the hole and we're going to scratch it into the drywall. Okay? Both directions. And then we're going to peel the drywall off the face paper. The sharper the knife you use on this, the cleaner the, the cut, by the way. All right. Now, we're going to take a little bit of mud here, and we're just going to throw it on all four sides, where it's going to make contact with the existing drywall. All right. And you put it in place. There we go. Press it flush with the existing wall. And then just work the mud to the corners. And if you don't have enough, you can add it behind and simply close it up. Okay. That is what we call a California patch. And the reason we like this is because the drywall paper that's on the drywall face is thinner than the paper that comes on the rolls. 
So generally, it takes one coat of finish time out of your job. Once you've done that, you can just add that thin coat all the way around. Okay. And then you can wait it until tomorrow or a couple hours. You can throw a fan on it and then put the last skim coat. You'll be good to go. All right. Beautiful. The next kind of patch is if you've got a plug. These things are a pain in the butt. You can push them all the way through or you can get a hammer and you can rip them out or you can just go like this, right, with your knife and chop the head off. Take the heel and always dry it by a four inch knife with a metal heel and make a bit of a dent. Other holes make a bit of a dent. Easier to fill a hole than to create a bump when you're patching over something, okay? See that? Those holes are filled. You might need to do two coats because this stuff does shrink when it dries. The third patch, probably never seen before. This is my favorite patch. You take a piece of drywall tape and you put it where you're going to patch a hole. I've never shown this trick on, on, on the, my video before. Now, you take your drywall tape that you're going to use to patch the hole and you simply cut the wall around the tape. And you can leave a little bit of extra space if you like. Well, the idea is you peel the paper off. And then when you set this in, now it's the same surface so you don't create a hump. One of the difficulties in doing kitchen cabinets, especially if it's a long run, like a 10 foot wall, or around the window of the kitchen and the cabinets are all continuous, is the fact that wooden structures tend to go like this. Okay? Do no fault of your own. Even if you try to make your walls perfect, wood just does weird things. And so here I am with this cabinet screwed tight to the wall. This one's tight to the wall, but my cabinets aren't lining up. And it's not because they're manufactured wrong. It's because I've got obviously a stud here that's causing a hump. So the way we fix this, we leave the clamps on. I literally have to undo that screw. And we're going to go right in the same spot. But what this does is it gives me the ability, okay, loosen that up, to pull this bottom cabinet forward, so you're gonna shim it with my tool, okay? And see that? Now I've got the ability to push it back, okay? Now I'm gonna finish throwing two screws in this before I sink that in again. And that is pretty much a process you go through over and over again, which is why it's nice to have those four screws in every cabinet. So you've got the ability to back off the tension, twist things around a little bit. This is what the secret sauce is in doing cabinets. Making sure that everything is flush at the front or you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to make all the doors look pretty. Okay. Now, we're gonna just carry on like normal. I'm going to take that off and then drive this screw home. Okay? Without over tightening. Do not want to break this beautiful joint. Cheers. So here we are with our doors for the base cabinets. They're basically painted. I think this one needs one more shot, but I'm going to install it on camera today because Max is here and we're dealing with the right subject matter. I'll just take it off the hinge and get the last coat on later. But I wanted to show you this. This is a special kind of hinge. This is designed to wrap around stick framing. Okay. And so it goes on the door like that. And your door will open. Okay. Piece of cake. What we're going to do is find a very consistent place on the doors to put the hinges. And that'll be this line coming across to the hinge. And I'm just going to make a quick little mark in the middle of all these three holes. Okay, top and bottom. There we are. Now we're going to take our drill and pre-drill our holes. Something really super tiny. Yeah. Now just to make sure, you can always make sure by putting the screw behind the drill bit and make sure you can still see the threads. That actually might be a little bit too thick. We're gonna to go to a 1 16th, which is almost non-existent. <laughs> Look how tiny this is. 
Look at it, it was a pre-drill. Okay. There we go. Just a little something something to make sure that the screw is going into the middle of the hole. Okay, which is really the goal here. Somewhere for the screw to start. This is why pre-drilling is so important. You had to have 13 fingers to do this. All right, again, don't over tighten the screw. You're just gonna core out the building material. Once it's snug, it's snug and you're done. Okay, that's all there is to it. You have with this kind of hinge is there's not a lot of flexibility. You don't have the ability, like we're gonna show you in a minute, we're gonna adjust these doors. You don't have different screw settings, moving things clockwise and in and out and off the... You're only gonna to get to put it on a stick frame and that's it. So that's why your stick framing has to be nice and flush. All right, now, just a trick. I'm lucky because a two by four is exactly the gap that I want. I can just set this on there and then <laughs> same thing. I can start a little pre-drill. The only flexibility I have with this system is I can put the screw in the middle of the slot because this is an adjustable height channel. Now I'm gonna go with the middle for the screws because I'm installing three doors over a length on concrete. I put them all at the very top in the same distance and use the two by four. I might find something that's like, wow, that looks ugly. I gotta make an adjustment because the floor could be dipping. So I'm leaving myself a little bit of room here for adjustment. Okay. Okay, now let's get that out of the way. Boom, we got a door. Okay, one more thing. The uh, hardware kit from Richelieu for the doors comes with the screws and these little felt tabs. It's a peel and stick and you just stick it on the corners where it makes contact with the wood. Okay, we're gonna set these aside. A, because I think I'm gonna spray that door one more time. And B, yeah, they're a little small and cheap. <laughs> There's actually better quality ones you can go. Grab the Home Depot. They're a little thicker. Look at the difference here. I'm gonna go with something thicker. I don't think I'm gonna end up using these. All right, so when you're adjusting doors, you wanna watch for a few main things. One is that the door is square to the box, okay? We've gone through great lengths here to make sure that the boxes are level and plumb. So if the door is leveled to the box, top and bottom, both sides, make sure it's not overhanging one side or the other, okay? This door is actually perfect, except for this. When I open it up, it's really tight at the top, really loose at the bottom, okay? So in this situation, I'm gonna loosen this screw just a bit and see how there's room for that to play. I'm gonna get rid of that not so tight. Oh, okay, there we go. And I'm going to, because right now the bottom's still way wacky. See the door, it has movement. We wanna make sure that it closes together. Now the bottom is closing before the top. There, now they're both closing together. Right here, I got a nice 1 8 and then the door is actually hanging out further than the cabinet. You can see this gap here is widening. That means this door needs to go like this. So let's take a look at what the solution here. We have these adjustment screws and you've got to go in reverse with these to back the screw out, which brings the hinge back in and that will square things off, okay? The same with this one, same thing on the other side. All right, now this is nice gap here. This one is not so nice. I probably adjusted too much. I want them consistent here. I want gaps here consistent. This one, the top is sticking out too far. I'm gonna make adjustment there. Uh, 
There we go. Now the only thing I can do now is make sure that all three of these gaps are consistent, which means this door and this door both need to go that way because the gap is too much, or this door can come this way. You can do either one. It's easier to move one door than two. Okay. There we go. Now to do really precise work, don't use a drill, use a screwdriver. I've just been a lot of experience with these things and I can, right? It's touch control. So if you don't have a lot of experience with your tools, grab a regular screwdriver and you can go quarter turn, quarter turn. You can keep track of the math. It'll help you a lot. Now we're at a point, time to put our handles on. Yes, and I'm cheap. I bought knobs instead of two screw handles. And I'll tell you why. A, it's half the price. B, it's half the time to install. C, you don't need an expensive jig in order to put it on. Right? All you gotta do is go like this and measure from this point, which is the inside corner of the door to the outside corner of the door. Okay? And if it makes it easier, you can start on a whole number like two. So I have got three and a quarter inches, which means half of three and a quarter is one half plus an eighth, which makes it one and five eighths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that tape measure there and I'm going to go one half five eighths. That's my hole. That's one way to do it. Or if you don't like the location, you can also go in the middle of the door, middle of the door. You can go middle of the door here. I'm just a bit of a big fan of this. I always found that that's a really nice spot, right? Split the difference of the width of that um, shaker, shaker trim on both areas. So just by measuring corner to corner and going in the middle of it on your tape measure, it gets you dead center of both of these lines. Okay. Ah, package comes with a screw. This screw is good for a single door. If you're doing drawers, you're going to have to go to the store and buy longer screws with the cutoff. We covered that information. We did a video in my closet in my farmhouse series. All the information on putting a hardware in there and those custom situations is in that video. I'll put a link in the video description if you really need to check that out. And then we're looking now for a hole that's wider than the screw. Okay, so we're going to go over here. Oh, that's perfect. Three sixteenths. All right. Double check. Is an inch and quarter, an inch and a quarter going to hit anything? The answer is no. Good to go. Once you have got everything level and square, then you can drill holes, not before. Okay. You might find that you're in a really funky old house and the walls are everywhere and you just can't level your cabinets perfect. So you've got to make them look like they're perfect, but they're not level. In those situations, <laughs> you might want to use a laser level or you can just drop a line across all your cabinets with a laser on a, on a, on a stick like I have. And don't worry about if they're all in the same spot on the cabinet door. When you're putting in, here, let me show you. If all my cabinets are out of, out of alignment, okay, but all the knobs are level, the knobs scream. And if they're like this across your kitchen, even if they're in the perfect position, it looks stupid. So you got to decide for yourself, is my kitchen installed level and plumb enough that I can put the screw in the same spot? Or do I got to make sure I drop a laser line and put all my knobs in the same spot? It's not a simple question to answer. Of course, the screw comes from the backside. And same thing, start this on reverse. And when you hear that click, you go in forward and you drive it in. Okay, remember, the metal in here is a lot stronger than the metal here. So if you're cross threading, the drill is so powerful, it'll force it in there and then just shear the screw off. Now you're stuck with a piece of screw inside your handle and it's useless. So. I always go backwards until you hear that click. Okay, we'll do it again. Okay, and then you go forward. Now you know you're not cross-threaded. 